My name is Bethany. Welcome to the podcast. Hi guys, so today I'm excited to feature five jewelry brands that I've really been eyeing lately, ones that I think bring a lot of value and artisanship to you know, standard jewelry making. And so it's nice to be able to think about that from this perspective of the creators who are making this. So the companies that I'm featuring today are ones that, you know, are are more small scale, I would say, for the majority of it. And also it's just really fascinating to hear about their eye and their process and where they came from and all of that, those things. So I want to start with the fifth one and I'm just going to work my way through it. And the first one that I want to talk about is Laura Lombardi. <laughs> Lombardi is a, a sacred name in this household because Zach is like a huge Packers fan, but I don't think that they're related at all. <laughs> um, only the people who are fascinated by the Packers will even probably know what I'm talking about there. But I digress. Uh, Laura Lombardi is somebody who creates jewelry based off of her roots, which were based in New York City as well as Italy. And so in New York City, she has like more of a, a raw and industrial style. And then when she pairs that with her Italian roots, she also has more of a classical art and sculptural feel to it. And you can really see that through some of her pieces. She creates a lot of different gold hoops. She designs that with both earrings and with chain belts and like just crazy stuff as well as like necklaces and anklets. I really like her anklet. Like I haven't worn an anklet in years, but I think that moving into spring and summer, I think it would be a really fun thing to do and a way to class up an outfit as well. Her prices, I would say, are around like 130 to 155 is what I'm looking at right now with the anklet. So I know that sometimes people are looking for things that are less than $100 when it comes to jewelry. Uh, one thing to note with the ones that I mentioned today, that some of them are below 100 so I'll point that out later. Um, but then others are more like heirloom pieces or just things that will hold their value. So just keep that in mind. Um, it might be something for me, like for me, for instance, when I've looked at jewelry as I've updated my personal style, I've thought about jewelry as a way to 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 wear something several million times. <laughs> so for necklaces, I'm going to wear them like these ones I've worn, you know, just especially the Nakia one. I probably worn it a hundred times. And so it's nice to be able to just think of it as far as like how many times you'll wear it or how well it will maintain and you'll keep it forever and you'll keep it as an heirloom. These are all just thought processes that go into the price as well as the artisanship behind it. So Lara Lombardi uses raw and recycled materials whenever she's making these things. And it, it comes a lot back to her interest in things like fine arts and sculpture, assemblage, mixed media. So she was just into all of these realms and she was able to then make this fashion or this jewelry line out of it, which is so amazing. One pair in particular of her gold hoop earrings that I think are really fascinating are the Anima. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. But what's really cool about them is like she took what would essentially be a gold hoop earring and it looks kind of twisted, like it was melted in fire and, and just kind of like morphed into something more sculptural. And it's really fascinating. It would definitely catch somebody's eye. And just the fact that it's also lightweight is really cool. So I never wear heavy earrings. I just can't. Like I've literally had one of my ears re-pierced and like I won't go into the details of that because <laughs> it's not pretty. Um, but I just am so averse to wearing heavy earrings. So something like this, if it truly is lightweight, like it's a hollow hoop earring, that would be a good option for me. So I'm definitely keeping an eye out and I like the idea of having something like this one, which is bigger. I would say it's like the size of a half dollar. Uh, yeah, I would say it's definitely bigger than a quarter. So this is definitely something. I would try these and see if they were like too big on me, but having something that's a little bit more of a statement piece wouldn't be bad either, especially something as beautiful and as gold as this one. 
So I'll be sure to link everything that I mentioned in the show notes slash description bar, whatever you guys want to call it. <laughs> um, but I'll be sure to just get every, all my links together for if you're interested in any of the pieces that I mentioned. Uh, but Laura Lombardi is somebody that she's been featured in several articles. I liked the ones by The Cut, by Elle, and Refinery29. They all have featured her, and it's just so cool to see how you know, whenever an artisan is like lifted up and featured, I think it's just so empowering and really goes back to the roots of the art behind it and the creator behind it. Number four on my top five countdown would have to be Soko. Soko is a place that I have shopped for before and I've been so impressed with just the beauty and uniqueness that I've had in the bracelets that I've gotten in the past. Um, so what's really neat about Soko is that they are trying to help artisans in Africa mostly who are um, a lot of them, this is just like what they described it as. So a lot of people in Africa mainly use their phone. So on their mobile phone, they're able to connect with the Soko marketplace. So people who have been generationally making jewelry and these trades have been passed down from generation to generation are now able to sell their jewelry worldwide through Soko. So Soko means marketplace. And it's really neat because then they just have this warehouse. So whenever you order something from Soko, it won't take forever to ship or anything. Like everything's right there in their warehouse and they just ship it out from there. But it's sustaining a lot of these artists who wouldn't be able to sell this um, at this global level. And then also because everything's just run, run through a mobile phone, it's cutting out like the middleman that is go that would take away money from the artisan. So all of this is like much more direct to consumer and it's just like this hub, this warehouse that then sends out the products. So I am really fascinated by the whole idea and in the past, like I've said, like I've loved my Soko bracelets. In fact, I've got a little bag here <laughs> that says Soko and I just love it so much because I just keep that little bag and that's like where I put all my bracelets. And, and so whenever I look for a bracelet in my dresser, then I, I know that that's where like my bracelets are. And it's just something I've kept forever. Another really cool thing about their products is that everything has more of a classic and timeless feel that I think would be universal. Like wherever Soko sells their products, I think that it would be something that would um, meet what people are expecting for jewelry. So this one that I'm looking at is a mini bold hoop earring. So it's, again, you're going to get a lot of hoop earrings in this video <laughs> because I'm really on the market for that. But what's great about them is that they're small. So if you don't want something that's over, like overstated or anything, it's, it's something that would be tasteful and unique and still very like sophisticated and classy. And so it comes in a couple colors, both brass and silver. So yeah, it's just really neat to see that. But then if you wanted something that was a little bit more on trend, I would say they have something that looks more tortoise shell and that one's a, it's a hoop earring that is made out of horn. It's, it's ethically um, made out of horn. So it says here it's handcrafted in ethically sourced horn by artisans in Kenya. So again, it's a lot of the same trades that people have done for generations and then it's just adapting the culture to meet that need and also a lot of the artisans are you know generally speaking like there are a lot of women who are making the jewelry that you're then like directly impacting their income so I just like that model it's not like every single brand that I find meets all of these standards but whenever I find a brand like Soko I just love it and I want to tell everybody about it <laughs> okay so number three is Wolf Circus. And I was really fascinated by this one line about them, which is a line of demi-fine jewelry. <laughs> and that means like, you know, not ultra luxe expensive, but more affordable. But it, the word demi-fine just kind of made me chuckle because I'm like, what if like after a date, you know, you're asked like, you know, how was it? It was like demi-fine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
I don't know what it is about this mic, but it just allows me to tell all of the worst jokes. <laughs> okay, so what's really cool about Wolf Circus is that it's just a, a team that's all women, which they said was like not an intentional decision, but just something that happened organically. And so they really just have a great time working together. And it's fun to be able to, you know, I'm going to keep going back to this, but it's fun to be able to be a part of whenever there's artisans or when there's a small team like your purchase goes so much further in that small team. So the ways that Wolf Circus really keeps down prices, I would say, is it's a lot more about, you know, having gold plating. So you might have something that's 14 karat gold, but it is gold plated. So that'll keep the cost down because gold is super expensive. But at the same time, it is something that they're using, like something that is going to be more affordable. And then also if they're not using that, then they've also got like recycled bronze, um, recycled sterling silver. And and so they're really keeping the cost down as much as they can. So for example, uh, some studs that they have that are so gorgeous, they're gold baby dune studs is what they're called. And so they're $65 for gold stud earrings. So they're still like, they're demi fine, you know, like they're not like forever 21 cheap. Like that's not what I'm going for with this video. This is something that still is not going to make your ears like get all itchy and stuff. This is something that's quality and I just love it so much. I love it because too, I'm, I'm a real fan of the Dreslin. I find a lot of like these artisans are featured over there. Um, so definitely look over there if you want to see like just brands you've never heard of, small scale, that type of thing. Uh, she also has a gold pendant necklace that has a little shell on it. And I just love that it's called Marcel. <laughs> For anybody out there who's seen the Marcel the Shell videos on YouTube, I think there's like the, the top video is like 30 million views. But I watched those when they first came out and I was just obsessed because it's just this cute, adorable little shell. And his name is Marcel. And I don't know. You'll have to watch it. It's not everybody's humor, but I just thought it was the funniest little thing. I think another perk to having the shell necklace, besides the fact that it's called Marcel, is that there are a lot of articles out there that are featuring heavily shell jewelry. And so this is a way to wear shell necklaces without it being like the coral necklaces from yonder past. Um, <laughs> but I do like the fact too that she also has some jewelry with pearls. So she has some gorgeous earrings. They're called the small pearl hoops in gold. Um, and I'm just like, I really like those a lot because it's got just a giant pearl on the end of a hoop. And so it's got not only the hoop, but then the pearl. And it's just like the combination is just so beautiful. That's really cool. It was neat to hear about the owner of that company, um, Fiona, I believe. Yeah, Fiona. Let me go to her Instagram real quick. So Wolf Circus on Instagram is Wolf underscore Circus. And it's really cool to see like how she's styling a lot of these pieces. Um, it, I think that's really beautiful too. Like those pearl earrings look so amazing on here. And it's also neat to just see how people are wearing them with everyday outfits and everything. So anyways, I digress. I think that it's just so beautiful. She was featured in Teen Vogue and also Primary NY and BB Collect. Actually switching between her Instagram and then referencing this old article that I read on Teen Vogue, she says she's inspired by her grandma's old jewelry, which is like, oh, that's exactly me. I so relate to that. <laughs> There's just something about like vintage jewelry and how your grandmother wore it. There's just something to that. Um, also, street style, she says, inspires her as well as her friends, confident women, painters, sculptors, and architects. I would say that a lot of artisans that I've been reading about like this, they all say that their whole goal about making jewelry is to inspire confidence. And I would say that that's so true. Like the times where I'm not wearing my jewelry and I'm outside like my house, I just feel a little bit like different. I can't really describe it. It's just, I don't know. I think jewelry does give you a confidence boost that you otherwise didn't have. And it's also just I always go back to it's a form of manners when you dress well and accessories are a great way to do that. Going back to confidence, that is something that I love to speak about on this channel. I find that it's the one thing that determines whether I do wear something or not because something could look amazing on me, but if I feel like embarrassed or awkward about it, 
you know, and people have actually written me like, can you talk about this? So let me just take a moment and talk about confidence because it is something that is elusive. I think that even people who, who like say that they're super confident, they're, they're, they're probably not that confident that you, they're probably just like puffing themselves up as armor so that their, their self-esteem issues aren't there. But I would say that it is really nice to be able to wear something that you're confident in because like I was saying earlier, if you're wearing something that doesn't bring you 100% confidence, no matter how amazing you look, it's going to take a lot to bring you out of that shell. Going back to Marcel the shell. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, to bring you out of that shell and just make you excited for your day. And like you have, you're on the right foot, if that makes sense. I feel like whenever I go in for a handshake to somebody I'm just meeting for the first time and I feel confident, not arrogant, but just like confident in my own skin, I feel like I can win that day. Like I can, I can do whatever I set out to do. I can make a new friend. Like there's just so much. If you're confident in your own skin, I feel like making new friends is a lot easier because you're not like heckling yourself in the back of your mind. Like you're just going in for it, you know, <laughs> like th when you don't put up walls, it's, it's just an amazing thing. And then that's just going to inspire you more to be more confident. The more that your own, um, footing on stepping out in your own manners and just respecting yourself as well as the other person, that's going to give you confidence and to heck with anybody who wants to put you down for whatever you chose to wear that day, whatever brings you the most confidence. So in that way, yeah, like I, I've lost a lot of my insecurities just because I just stopped caring so much about what the other person thought and putting myself down for the things that I really like. So when you even that scale, like you're going to be just fine. And there's no such thing as someone who's always confident all the time. It's a mindset and any little thing, any little edge that you can give yourself, if it's wearing a nice necklace out and you feel like so much better by wearing that necklace, then yeah, I would say that jewelry and clothes and like superficial things to a degree can bring you confidence. And that's why I'm talking about this today. <laughs> Okay, moving on to number two of my top five. Bray & Oro has been a brand that I have worn every day almost since my last birthday, which was in April, if you wanted to know. <laughs> um, Zach bought me some amazing diamond stud earrings. They're very simple. Half the time, I don't realize that I'm wearing them until I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Um, and so it's nice to be able to wear something very comfortable that I wear like in the shower, I wear it to bed, I never have to take out my earrings, and it's just nice to be able to always have my earrings life settled. Like I don't have to think about it, it's just there and the rest of my outfit can shine. I notice some people earrings might be where you have your statement essence and that's fine, but what's really great about Vray and Oro is that it's understated. Um, I think they call it subtle e elegance. When they were featured in Forbes, they called it subtle elegance. Another thing about Vray and Oro is it's not going to be demi-fine. <laughs> like this is something where you're not buying anything gold plate plated. This is something that you're actually buying solid gold and the the diamonds are high quality diamonds so you might not have huge diamonds when you buy from Vray and Oro but it's it's quality and so that's what's really great like these little studs you won't even see them half the time but because they're there like it's just nice and it was a really lovely gift so if you're looking to buy someone a piece of jewelry as a gift then Vray and Oro would be your friend, like someone, someone very special to your life, like your mother <laughs> or something like that. Like this is, this is quality and it's timeless. And also they have very high ethical standards as far as their diamonds are concerned in particular. And then everything's made in downtown LA, which also comes with a price tag because they're not going to, like they're able to assure that everything is happening at a very like high standard in, when they're making their jewelry. So a note about pricing and the pieces that I really like, um, these ones are pricier, uh, so just know that. But I do like their thick stacking ring, um, so that's $220. 
but it's, you know, it's a sizable band, kind of like the one I'm wearing right now, which is brass. Um, but this one's actually 14 karat yellow gold. Uh, you can also choose white gold or rose gold. And then the size range is absolutely amazing. I, it's really hard to find rings. Like, I don't know about you, but like I have... I have like a stick for a pinky <laughs> and so like they go down to a size two and so if you have a similar issue then that would be really great. They also go up to size 11 so they're really like size friendly and then they also have some skinny stacking rings that are a trio which is so cool. Um, so that one's pricier as well. That one's 186 and you can buy that again in 14 yellow gold. Uh, 14 karat yellow gold, sorry, and white gold and rose gold. So this is quality that you're paying for. Like this is not joking around. This is not getting your fingers green when you go to wash the dishes. Like this is something you will invest in and it will never like get all green or anything like that. So that's really cool as well as the fact that they're not plated. Like you can wash your hands and it's still going to be gold. Like nothing happens. It's not going to just rub off or anything so you get what you pay for gold is super expensive right now and that's just kind of the way that it is okay drum roll please the number one brand that i am eyeing this season is j hannah so there's a few reasons for this um something that i've purchased from but but not really i've bought her nail polishes which are absolutely amazing i've got them in himalayan salt and then there's also one that is like a glitter shimmer like gold i don't remember the name of it but it's absolutely amazing and i just love my nails whenever i I do her nail polish. Um, so that was amazing. But also in my research about Jay Hannah, whose name is really Jess, uh, it's really cool to find out her passion and like what inspired her, what got her started. So her grandmother's vintage pieces, she inherited and it just kind of took off from there. It inspired her from there. So that's just Again, like with the grandmother thing, like you can tell that there's a theme to all of these is that they're timeless. They're not necessarily from this era. And that's what I look for with jewelry is something, maybe it's a little bit on trend. Like a, I wear a lot of coin necklaces, for instance, that's really on trend, but it's not something that feels like it's from this time. And so that's what's so cool is to find out where people find their passion, like their inspiration, and then how they transform it into a new work of art through jewelry. I don't know if I say jewelry. I, I think I say jewelry really weird. <laughs> but I also think Zach says it weird. He always says it like jewelry. And I don't know, there's a debate there in our family. But uh, anyways, back to Jay Hannah. I think that it's really cool that you can't really define her jewelry, like where it's from. And I also think it's cool how like whenever you'd see someone wearing her pieces, it would look like, oh my gosh, where did you get those? Like, wh where's that that necklace from? You know what I mean? It's that type of conversation that would happen over her pieces. So that's what I love about them. She's got a whole collection that I love so much that's made out of quartz rock crystals. And so this is, uh, okay, the Glace collection, I believe. I'm probably still butchering that. I'm trying, you guys. <laughs> but I think that it's so beautiful. It's like got all of this gold and these, these drop earrings just look like they're drops of ice is what it looks like. So they're not sparkly like a diamond or anything. It's quartz, but it has just an old world feel to it. That's so beautiful. Oh, I just love it so much. So the, the earrings are amazing. She's got a ring that's amazing. Same, same collection. And then she also has an oval pinky signet ring. So I'm really excited about that because it goes all the way down to size 1.5, which means I can wear it on my pinky. <laughs> So it says here in the description that a signet jewelry is more where you would put your mark, your identity, you know, you would you would pour the wax and then you'd stamp your signature into it. Uh, so that's kind of the idea. It's an old world feel again, but something that you could definitely pass down as well. So yeah, pricey, but heirloom and quality. So these are things to weigh for yourself and see where, where you align with your jewelry needs and go from there. But um, I'm... I'm really, I'm really obsessed with Jay Hannah's stuff. Like, and I don't use the word obsessed lightly. Like I know everybody says that they're, you know, obsessed with hamburgers or obsessed with, you know, whatever is, I don't know. 
I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Just that like, I mean it like Jay Hannah's stuff is amazing. Every single piece that she has is something that I am attracted to and I would buy if I had millions of dollars. <laughs> um, but I do really love her pieces. So the signet ring it, it's a range depending on the type of metal that you go with and, you know, as well as the size, it goes from 268 to 665. So you might not wear it on your pinky if it's on the pricier range. You might get, a, you know, a size 9. You might get it in silver. You know, there's different aspects to something like that. So guys, I hope that you liked this video. Um, just know that none of this was sponsored, but there's definitely brands in the future that I would love to work with, obviously. And so this, just know like this was all just stuff that I spent hours researching on my own behalf and ones that I am, like I said, obsessed with. <laughs> um, but anyways, I will let you guys go. My screen is getting brighter than the sun outside. So I must end this now and say farewell. I hope that you liked this. If if you did on YouTube, give it a thumbs up or wherever you're listening to this, which this will be like one of the first things that I post on my actual podcast for audio use. Um, I would definitely say to give it a five star rating or whatever you guys do out there. I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm bringing you guys along with this journey, but it really means so much that you're following along and I will see you guys next time. Bye.